Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Nestor here. So I am here to walk you through this week's assignments. So these will be for Monday, April 20th through Friday, April 24th. And this one is the five a day. This is the reading language arts. And you're going to start day one. You're going to go from left to right. Day two, left to right. Day three, left to right. Day four, left to right and day five left to right. So we're gonna start with trace the sight words. Um, you should be able to read these, but if not, we'll read them together. T-H-E-Y, what does T-H-E-Y say? They, good job. So you're gonna use your best handwriting to trace the word they, right here and here, they. Okay, the next box over, color the pictures that begin with each blend. So the blend we have first is BR. Do you remember what BR says when they're pushed together and blended together? Brr. Brr. Okay, so you're going to color two pictures that start with the brr blend. You have turtle, bread, broom, butterfly. Which two start with burr? Color those in. All right, this first one is done for you, but this one you're gonna write the vowel sound for each picture. And remember, our vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. And they either say A, E, I, A, A, or they say their name if they're a long vowel. So the first picture is a picture of a frog. You hear an ah in the middle, so you should have written um, an O oh for that. Okay, the next one, circle and write the best sight word. So we're gonna fill in our sentences with, our, with the correct sight word. May I come blank you with when his. May I come with you? May I come when you? Or may I come his you? Only one of those makes sense. So you're going to circle the right one and write it on the line. Okay, in the last box you're going to write the words. You're going to look at the picture and you're going to fill in the squares, the shape squares, and remember, if it's a tall square, then it's going to be a letter that goes above the dotted line that goes up to the roof. And if it hangs down like this one, it's a letter that hangs under the bottom. Okay? That is a tub. Tub. Write what you hear. T -ub tub. All right? Day two. B. -E. What word is B? -E? Good job, B. So you're gonna use your best handwriting to trace the word B, B, E, B, E. Okay, the next one, we're coloring in the picture that begins with the blend. This blend is a C, R, cur, cur. Okay, we have a crab glasses, kite, crown. Only two of those have a cur sound at the beginning. Crab, glasses, kite, crown. Color those two in. All right, the next one, you're writing the vowel sound for each picture. That is a shell, shell. What vowel do you hear that says eh, eh, eh? Write that on the line. The next box, this is blank cat. We're gonna circle the right sight word and write it on the line. This is blank cat. This is they cat. This is his cat or this is with cat, they, his, or with. Circle it and write it up there. 
All right. The next box, we are writing the word. Write the word that names the picture. That is a rug. So you're going to write what you hear. Er, ug, rug. All right. Day three would be Wednesday. You're going to trace the sight word. I want you to read the sight word and trace it. T-H-I-S. Do you remember what T-H-I-S is? This. Great job. So you're going to trace this two times. Use your best handwriting to try to stay on the lines. This. This. Alright, the next thing you're going to do is color the pictures that begin with the blend. This box, we have a DR for our blend. Do you remember what a DR says when you smash them together and blend them together? They say, durr, durr. Okay, so we're going to color two pictures that start with durr. We have pencil, drum, dragon, and lollipop. Two of those start with a durr. Color those in. Okay, this middle one, we are writing the vowel sound for each picture. Okay, that is a picture of a little girl, but if you look at where the arrow is pointing, it is pointing to her leg. Leg. What vowel sound do you, do you hear? Write it on the line. Leg. Write the vowel. Okay, the next one. We're circling and writing the best sight word that makes the sentence make sense. Okay, our sight words are B, M, and two. Will you blank my friend? Will you be my friend? Will you am my friend? Or will you to my friend? Circle the correct one and write it on the line. All right, the last square, we have a gumball machine and we have sticks of gum. So write what you hear, g, uh, m, mm, gum. All right, day four, this will be Thursday of this week. Day four, these are the, this is the sight word that you have to write nice and neat twice. W-I-T-H, do you remember what that says? With, great job, with. So you're going to write with two times, nice and neat. And in the next box, you're going to color the picture that begins with the blend. Now we have FR as a blend. What does FR say? Fur, fur. Very good. All right, so two of these pictures begin with a fur at the beginning. We have gate, frog, fruit and caterpillar. Okay, fur. Circle the two that start with a fur. All right, in the middle we're writing the vowel of the picture that is a pig. Which of these vowels is in pig? All right, circle and write the best sight word. Our sight words are the, they have blank like to play. The like to play, they like to play, or have like to play. Circle it and write it in the sentence. All right. And in this last box, we're writing the word that names the picture. That is a, um, a mug. I will take mug or cup, either one, because both of them fit in here. So if you're writing, if you think it's a mug, m ug, and if you think it's a cup, k up. Write what you hear. I'll take either one. All right, day five, this is Friday. You're tracing the sight words again. H-I-S, what sight word is H-I-S? His, so you're gonna write his, 
his. Try to stay on the line and write it. Take your time. Write it neat as you can. All right, the next box, color the picture that begins with the blend. We have a GR. Do you remember what a GR says when you blend it together? It says grr, grr. Okay, so we have grape, hen, grill, and can. Circle or color the two that say grr. All right, in the middle, you're writing the vowel sound for the picture. Okay, that is a picture of a bat. A bat. Bat. What do you hear? Write the vowel that you hear in bat. Okay, the next is filling in the correct sight words. You're going to circle it down here and write it. Your sight words are with, hear, this. I want blank cat. I want with cat. I want hear cat. Or I want this cat. Circle it and write it. All right. And the last thing you're going to do for this week for reading is write the word of this picture. We have this as a nut. So you're going to write what you hear in the boxes. N -a -t N-A-T-NUT. All right. Awesome job. We're going to move on to math. All right, so here's the five-a-day math work for April 20th to 24th. So same thing as the reading language arts. You do day one. You go from here to the right. Day two, left to right. Day three, left to right. Day four, left to right. And day five, left to right. And I will help you work through this, okay? So day one, we're doing our quick checks first. And we are adding. Remember, you can draw, use your fingers, use your head, whatever you need to to get your answer. And remember, whenever you add a zero to any number, the answer is always what? That number. All right, so you're just going to write on the sides here your answers, okay? So we have 0 plus 2 equals, write your answer in, 2 plus 2 equals, 4 plus 2 equals, and 6 plus 2 equals. All right, um, on Monday, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to count how many circles are colored in on a 10 frame. So all you're going to do is count the circles and write them. How many? Write them right here. All right. The next one, we are using a graphic organizer to help us find the number seven. Okay. This is when we split the whole into pieces and we've done this in class. Okay. So we know that on the left, we have four leaves and we know that our total is seven. So you're going to put four on your fingers and you're going to count up to seven and the amount that you counted up to from four is your answer. Okay. So if you have to put four in your head, okay, go ahead and do that. Put four in your head. All right. Now you're going to use your fingers to count up to seven. You're going to go, okay, four, four's in my head. Now I'm going to use my fingers. Five, six, seven. How many fingers did you use to get to seven? That's your answer. So you're going to draw that number of leaves in the box. And to check your work, once you're finished, you're going to go back and count all of them and make sure that they equal seven. Okay. The next one is subtraction and addition. You have to start paying attention to the symbols here. Okay. So on this one, 9 minus 9 is equal to, and write your answer underneath the line. If I have 9 pieces of pizza and I give you 9 pieces of pizza, how many does that leave me? Write that answer under the line. All right. 2 plus 6 is equal to, that's a plus, okay? 
So over here we're taking away, minus, take away. Over here we're adding, two plus six is equal to, write it under the line. Use your fingers, or you can put the big number in your head and count up, okay? All right, and in the last one, we're using dice to add. Four plus one equals, okay, write your number. If you need to, count, count the dots. And the total number of dots on both of them is your answer. All right, day two, quick check again. This is Tuesday. You're going to write your answers on the side on the right of the equal to. 8 plus 2 equals 1 plus 2 equal 3 plus 2 equals and 5 plus 2 equals. Okay, remember, use your fingers, draw pictures, use your head, whatever you need. And these are all plus, they're all addition. So we're adding two. Alright, the next one is using dice again. You're adding three plus two equals. Write the answer on the line. If you need to, count your dots. And there's your answer. Okay, the next one. This is writing the time that is shown on the clock. Okay, a quick review. We have done time, but to remember the big long hand, the long one, is the minute hand. The short one is the hour hand, okay? When you're doing the minute hand, we learned o'clock and half past. That's all we learned in first grade. So if the long hand is touching the 12, it's o'clock, and you write that with zero, zero. If the long hand, the minute hand, is touching the six, it's half past or three zero, okay? So those are some hints on when you're completing the time. So you're gonna write the time shown on the clock, okay? So this first one, this in to the left of the colon, the double dots, is the hour hand. Remember the hour hand is the little hand. You actually write what number it is touching or it's pointing to. On the right of the colon is the minute hand. And remember, that's either going to say zero, zero, or three, zero. So write your time. The next square, I want you to tell me how many. How many squares are colored in on the 10 frame? All you do is count your, your circles and write it on the line. Okay, and the last math assignment for Tuesday is pay attention to your math symbols here. This one is minus or take away, and this one is plus or add. Okay, you have seven, you take away one. What is your answer? You count backward. Okay, again, if I have seven ice cream cones and I give you one, how many do I have left? Okay, and over here it's addition. If you have two plus one, write your answer. Okay, day three, Wednesday, quick checks again. Seven plus two is equal to, write it. Nine plus two is equal to, write it. Two plus zero is equal to, write it. And two plus two is equal to, write it. All right, here's another one of our graphic organizers for math. We know that the total number of apples is six. That's what that is for. It's telling us from here to here, it's six. Well, we're missing an amount of apples. We're not quite sure how many. So we're trying to figure out this number plus two is equal to six. So you're gonna use, you're gonna put the two in your head and count up on your fingers. So you're gonna go two, three, four, five, six. How many more did you count up? How many fingers do you have now? Okay, that's what you're gonna draw. And to check it, you're gonna count these apples plus these apples, and if they equal six, you got it right. 
All right, in the middle, how many? Just need you to count how many circles there are and write it on the line. Using dice again, two plus two equals, if you're not sure, count your dots and that's your answer. All right, we are reviewing tens and ones. Remember that this stick right here is 10 ones, so that represents 10. We have one, two, three, four tens, so if I count by tens, I'm gonna go 10, 20, all right. How many did you count? Write that on the line. Write that number. And it should have a zero over here. 10, 20, 30, 40. Good job. So you're going to write 40 here. Okay. Day four. This is Thursday. Quick check. 2 plus 4 equals. 2 plus 6 equals. 2 plus 8 equals. And 2 plus 1 equals. Write those answers. Okay, on the next one, you are adding one plus two equals, and if you need, you can count the dots and write the dots there. All right, this is something we had started and we've worked on a little bit. When you have a 10 and you add more to that number, so for example, if I have 10 plus two, I count up. I go 10, 11, 12. So my answer is going to be 12. Okay. So you're going to take your 10 and add six more and write your answer. So put the 10 in your head and count up on your fingers if you need to. If you need to, draw a 10 frame, fill in the 10 frame, and add ones underneath the 10 frame, and there's your answer. Count them all. Okay. So on this, you're doing 10 plus 6 equals, write your answer underneath, and 10 plus 1 equals. Okay, here we are at time again. Write the time shown on the clock. Remember, the minute hand, the long hand, if it touches a 12 or a 6, it's either o'clock, 0, 0, or half past, 3, 0. Okay, so this is where the minute the hour hand goes and this is where the minute hand goes okay the hour comes first and then the minute so you're going to look at the clock and you're going to write it for me all right the last one for thursday you're counting how many this is a 10 frame how many are filled in on the 10 frame count them and tell me write it up here and on friday okay Friday's day five, quick checks. Two plus three equals, two plus five equals, two plus seven equals, and two plus nine equals. And remember, you can either use your fingers until you get down here to two plus nine, and then you have to use a toe to help you. Um, or you can just put the big number in your head and count up the smaller numbers, okay? however you need to, to get your answer. All right, this next one are tens and ones. These are tens and these are ones, okay? These are just our little one cubes. So we have two groups of 10. So you're gonna count by tens. You're gonna go 10, 20. And now you're gonna count by ones, 10, 20, 21, okay, write what you have. So you've got 20 plus however many ones there are. Okay, here we are ad adding again, four plus two equals, and if you need to count the dice circles, you can. So you're going to count these dots plus these dots, and there's your answer if you need that. How many, how many squares of the 10 frame are filled in? You're going to write your answer here. OK, 
okay? And the last square for the week, these are both addition, so you're just adding, okay? One plus one more equals, and here's our doubles facts that we've been working on, nine plus nine equals. If you don't know what nine plus nine equals, remember put the first nine in your head and count up nine more on your hands, or you can draw nine circles and nine more circles and count them, okay? Awesome job, all right. So that's all for the reading language arts and that's all for the math. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to science and social studies. And we are almost finished for this week. All right, for science and social studies this week, you can see it here. It is, um, we just have four things for you to do this week. So um, again, science and social studies is not mandatory, but I think it would be very beneficial and um, exciting and engaging. And I think you guys would have fun with it. So for Monday, I want you guys to look at the weather outside and draw a picture of the weather. So take time, go and look and examine the weather and get a scrap piece of paper or use one of the papers that you got from the paper packet and turn it over and draw a picture of the weather outside. Talk about the kinds of things you can do in that kind of weather, okay? So if it's cloudy, you can draw a picture that's cloudy and talk, of, talk to your families about what you can do in cloudy weather. If it's rainy, sunny, snowy. So on Monday, you're going to draw a picture of the weather outside and talk about the things, that you, things you can do in that weather. You can even take the time if you want to draw a picture of you doing something in the weather. All right, on Tuesday, be a good citizen at home. Help your family with a chore. What new chores can you learn? Um, remember, we've talked about how to be a good citizen in the school, in the community, and at home. So there's lots of ways to be helpful at home and be a good citizen. So a good challenge for you is to learn a new chore and help your family with a chore today on Tuesday, okay? on Wednesday and Thursday, okay? So this will take two days, so no pressure, take your time. We're gonna read the Scholastic Newsletter, Recycle That Gum. We're gonna read the newsletter, we're gonna complete the back page, and then a worksheet that goes with it. And on Friday, um, community helpers, we've talked about different community helpers. One community helper in the community is a chef. Chefs cook for people at restaurants and at fast food places and at hotels. So I'm challenging you on Friday to become a chef and help cook something with your family. Not too hard, is it? All right, so let's go ahead and go to our newsletter and we're gonna work through that together. All right, so the Scholastic Newsletter this week is called Recycle That Gum. Have you ever stepped in gum? It's gross. Gum on sidewalks is a yucky problem. A scientist named Anna Bolas decided to help fix it. How did she do it? We're gonna find out. So as we read, we're gonna think about how Anna helped fix the problem, and we're gonna learn how she did it step by step. Hooray for Earth Day. In your town, would you rather have this river or this one? Would you rather have this playground or this one? Would you rather breathe this air or this air? Believe it or not, in the past there were no rules or laws about keeping the earth clean. People could litter anywhere they wanted, and dangerous chemicals could be poured into rivers and streams. But what does it mean for the earth to be clean and healthy? It means there's no litter on the ground. Animals can get sick if they eat litter. It means the air is clean. People and animals need clean air to breathe. It means there are plenty of trees. Trees help clean the air. They are also homes for many animals. 
A healthy earth also means there is clean water. We all need clean water to drink, and fish and other sea animals need a clean place to live. Luckily, many people have realized how important it is to keep the earth clean and healthy. Now we have laws to protect the earth, and people around the world celebrate Earth Day every April 22nd. They plant trees. They clean up. They show how they care about the earth. But we don't have to wait until Earth Day to care for our home. What can you do every day to help the earth? You can throw your garbage in a trash can instead of throwing it on the ground. Did you know that paper is made from trees? You can save trees by using less paper. Draw on both sides instead of just one. Sometimes plastic bags blow into the ocean. You can use reusable bags instead of plastic ones when you go shopping. Thanks for keeping the earth healthy. It's the only one we've got. All right. So Earth Day is coming up this week. It is actually Wednesday, April 22nd. So this was a perfect scholastic for us to do on Wednesday and Thursday because it's going to teach us how to recycle gum, which helps us take care of the earth. All right. So we're going to go ahead and read about a scientist called Anna Bullis. She wanted to help fix the problem of gum on sidewalks. So she found a way to recycle gum. This is how she did it step by step. The title is called A Sticky Problem. Okay. Step one, she learned about gum. And this is a picture of her chewing gum, making it, blowing a bubble. And the caption down here points to her and says her name. Anna couldn't recycle gum without learning about it. She learned that gum is made out of a kind of rubber. People use rubber to make things like boots and balls. Anna thought she could use gum to make things too. Okay. Step two, the, she recycled the gum. Okay. So this is a picture here and the title says, Anna heated the gum until it was soft. All right. So the caption for the picture just told us that this is heated gum and it's soft. Okay. Anna took some old gum and heated it up. She mixed plastic into it. That made it stronger. Then Anna used a mold. A mold is a hard container. She poured the soft, warm gum into the hard mold. She wanted to give the gum a new shape. The gum cooled and hardened. It was a new shape. Anna had done it. She had recycled the gum into something new. Okay. So first she learned about it and she learned that it was made of types of rubber. Okay, we have boots and balls and all kinds of things that rubber is made out of. So then she decides to recycle it. She heats it up. She mixed it with plastic. And she poured it into a mold, um, like a plastic container, to help give it a different shape. Okay, and step three, she helped clean up communities. Okay, so here's a little sign and it says gum here. And the caption says, the chewed up gum goes in the slot. So she made a container for people to throw their chewed up gum into the recycle bin. Anna knew she could recycle a lot of gum. She started a company to do just that. The company hangs up pink plastic balls in different communities. There it is. People put their chewed up gum in the balls. They don't throw it on the ground. When the balls are full, Anna's company collects them. It recycles the gum inside. It turns the gum into new things. Anna had found a smart solution to a sticky problem. Okay. These are some items that are made with gum. Okay. So her company actually made these items out of gum. Boots, pencils, cups, and rulers. Anna turned gum into all of these items. Awesome job, Anna. All right, so now let's turn your, your scholastic on the back page, and we're going to complete the back page together. And it says, gum isn't the only thing we can recycle. Read the chart 
and then we're going to color in the bubbles for the correct answers. So this is a chart which we've learned about in math. So um, this is called recyclables chart. Okay, this down the left side tells us the type of recyclable that it is, what it's made of, and what it can be turned into. So first we have a shampoo bottle. Okay, most of us have shampoo bottles at home because we take a bath or a shower and we wash our hair. So shampoo bottles, what is it made of? It's made of plastic. What can it be turned into? You can turn shampoo bottles into toys, buckets, and new plastic bottles. So this is a picture of shampoo bottles that have been turned into drinkable water bottles, slinkies, and toy buckets. Okay. All right, in the middle column, this is a soup can. How many of you guys have cans, canned food at home? Okay, what is it made out of? Metal, okay. What can it be turned into? It can be turned into car parts, bike parts, and new cans, okay. Because it's metal, it can be turned into all of those things. All right, and then the last one is a juice bottle. How many of you have juice bottles like apple juices and orange juices and grape juices at home? Okay, it is made of, this one's an actual juice bottle. It's not the plastic bottle, but the glass bottles. Okay, so this juice bottle is made out of glass. What can it be turned into? It can be turned into new glass bottles and jars. So they can be recycled and turned into new bottles. Okay. Number one, what can be turned into new plastic bottles? All right, so up here, let's find plastic, plastic, metal, and glass. Okay, plastic. Which one of these can be turned into that? Is it the shampoo bottle, the soup can, or the juice bottle? Yes, it's the shampoo bottle because it's plastic. So color in your first circle where it says shampoo bottle. Okay, number two, what can be turned into new cans? Okay, are new cans created from shampoo bottles that are plastic, from soup cans that are metal, or juice bottles that are glass? New cans, let's find it, new cans. Do you see the word new cans? What created it? Soup cans, so color in the second square where it says soup can. Okay, number three, what can be turned into new glass jars? Okay, we know that shampoo bottle is made out of plastic. A soup can is made out of what? Metal. And the juice bottle is made out of what? Glass. So if I'm making new glass bottles and jars, what am I going to use? A glass juice bottle. So you're going to color in the last circle. Okay. Number four, which one is made of glass? Do you remember? We've got plastic, metal, and glass. What was made out of glass? Good job. So we have shampoo bottle. Nope, that's plastic. Soup can. Nope, that was what? Metal. Juice bottle. What was it made out of? Glass. Awesome job. So color in the last circle. Good work. Good job. All right, and we have one more worksheet with this, and we will be done for, with science and social studies for the week. All right, so the last worksheet for science this week, this is the reading checkpoint for Recycle That Gum. We're going to use our newsletter to answer the questions. Okay, number one, what was the problem Anna noticed? Was it people were chewing too much gum? Gum didn't taste very good or people were leaving gum on the sidewalks, okay? And if you need to, you can always look back, but if you look at this picture, people were stepping on gum because why? Yes, people were leaving gum on the sidewalk. So you're gonna color that one in. Um, color in where it says people were leaving gum on the sidewalks, okay? Number two, what did Anna find a way to do? Did she find a way to make her own gum, recycle gum into new things, or stop people from chewing gum? What's the name of the story? 
recycle that gum. So which one would be the answer? Did she make her own gum? No. Did she stop people from chewing gum? No. But she did recycle gum into new things. So you're going to color in the second circle. Okay. Number three. Anna hangs this up in communities. What is it for? Do you remember the picture? Yes. She hangs it up for people to put their chewed gum in. All right. So you're going to write that. Um, let's see. Oh, all my stuff went away. Let me color this back in. All my stuff went away. All right. So our answer is, what is it for? It is for put chewed gum in. And again. My handwriting's not the best, but it is because I'm using my laptop. Put chewed gum in. Okay, number four. This is a fun art project for you. Draw one thing Anna can turn gum into. All right. And if we can't remember, what we'll do is we'll actually go back and we'll look. So we have, she noticed people were leaving gum on the sidewalk. She found a way to recycle gum and she uses this to put chewed gum in. Okay. We are now going to draw something that she can turn gum into, but all of my writing is going to go away. So. Okay, so here is our picture of things that she turns gum into. All right, boots, pencils, cups, and rulers, okay? All right, so pick one that you want to draw, boots, pencils, cups, rulers. All right, remember, boots, pencils, cups, rulers. I'm going to draw, don't make fun of me. <laughs> I'm going to draw a boot. All right, so she makes boots. Okay, you can draw pencils, cups, rulers, but she makes boots out of them, right? And I labeled it. You can pick any one of them and actually draw it. Okay, awesome job. And you are finished with your science and social studies. So now we'll go and we'll check out and see what um, some fun things you can do for PE, music, and art are. All right, we're almost done for the week. So this week for PE, music, art, and exploration, these are some things that I'm encouraging you to do, but again, you don't, it's not mandatory. Um, on Monday, maybe complete a puzzle or play a game with your family, a board game or a puzzle, anything like that. On Tuesday, practice tying your shoes. Some of you already know how. Keep practicing or teach someone else how to tie their shoes. And if you don't know, practice, practice, practice. We got to learn how to tie those shoes, okay? Wednesday, do the following exercises while you sing the ABCs. Switch around and do some jumping jacks and balance on one foot. Okay, the jumping jacks will get your heart rate moving and the balancing on the one foot will bring you down and get you cooled down. Do those while you sing the ABCs a couple of times. Okay, on Thursday, choose a song and make up a dance. There's lots of songs. There's movies that have songs in them. We have lots of songs we can sing. The ABCs, anything. You can make up a dance to the ABCs. Maybe um, do shapes with your bodies that form the letters of the alphabet. Anything, any kind of song that you like, choose that song and make up a dance and perform that dance for your family and teach them some of the moves. And on Friday, maybe you can play a game of I Spy using a variety of colors, okay? Because normally we have art on Fridays. So you can play I Spy and that would incorporate all of the colors, like different colors that you are 
that you use when you're doing art. Okay, so that's all I have for you this week. Remember, if you need me at all for anything, you can reach out to me. Um, your moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and family members, they have my phone number. They have my email. Um, if they're on the Remind app, they can reach out that way. Um, however you need to get in touch with me, I've given that all to you. Please just work this week and try your best, but have fun learning, okay? Don't stress out. I know I'm not there to teach you face-to-face, -face and I miss that, but keep working, keep having fun, and keep spending time with your families. Love you guys. See you soon.